My shower keeps sputtering. Someone told me this could be methane, which sounds kind of dangerous. How do I know if it is methane, and how do I get it out of my water? Well, if you have methane in your water, let me advise you one thing. Don't smoke in the shower. It could be an explosive experience. Actually, we've been treating methane in the water for a long time. I remember the first time was maybe about 35, 40 years ago. And we were trying to figure out if it was methane in the water or not because people would turn on their faucet. The shower would spit and sputter in the morning. And it was, it was kind of, I mean, it didn't smell bad, but it was just not a fun thing for the, for the family. So I took a milk jug, went over to the kitchen sink, turned on the water and filled that milk jug, plastic milk jug, about two thirds full with the water right out of the tap. And then I immediately capped that jug Got a cigarette lighter, let it sit for about 30, 30 seconds, took that cap off and, and lit the water at the top, lit the air right at the top of the, of the uh, milk jug, and it shot out a flame about this high. We were pretty sure it was methane at that point. So methane is pretty simple to remove, although it's not inexpensive. What is, what's involved in removing methane is simply a atmospheric tank Water comes in from your well, from your pressure tank. It comes into the top of this tank, and there's a ring around the top of the tank where the water sprays out. It diffuses that water, and of course, methane, being light like air, is going to tend to go up. We have a vent on that methane tank that vents it to atmosphere. It can, it can have a fan or not have a fan. It depends on the application. The water settles in the bottom of the tank, the air, the methane goes out with the air, and you remove your methane. There's a pump inside that tank, it's, a, it's a, actually a submersible pump, and you have another pressure tank, and then you go to the house, and you have methane-free water. Now, this can be the last part of a treatment system, but I will tell you this, if you have a water softener, you may have to put the water softener after the methane tank because air is compressible, so is methane a little bit. And what happens is you may not be able to regenerate that water softener because the pistons or the seals, the valve disc, may not be able to turn because of the back pressure of the methane against the water softener. And so sometimes even if you have hard water and you want to have a water softener, you need to treat it after that. The most important thing, and, and listen carefully, when you're testing water, even if you know you have methane, maybe you did the methane test where you took a jug and you shot a flame four feet in the air, and I've seen that happen too. If you know that it's methane, you still need to have a water test because other competing contaminants can change the way that you're going to treat it. If there's iron, if there's sulfur, if there's manganese, if there's high hardness, if there's tannin, if there's high silica, I mean, there's lots of issues that can occur. Even the pH level is important. Get a water test. That's the most important thing you can do. And U.S. Water offers a lab test from an EPA approved lab at a very nominal price. You may have questions on how to do this and you can talk to one of our master water specialists or certified water specialists at U.S. Water and we can tell you the best way to get the methane out of your water. Thank you.